Okay, this is a demonstration of the back end of the Lightning app that I'm writing. Um, I'm writing it with somebody else. This is not the front end of the application. This is just my test front end that kind of walks through some of the functionality. Um, when this launches as a product, it'll hopefully look a lot nicer. Um, but yeah, this is just a base, basic demonstration purposes front end. Uh, so what we have here, I got an instance of Chrome and an instance of Firefox. This represents two two web visitors on the you know visiting our site. Uh, so there's like a bit of a, a chat room. So we'll call this one Alice. This one Bob. And go hello. And yeah, it's just a basic uh, two two users in sort of a shared shared environment um, as they you know browse the site. So what you see at the main menu here is um, it's showing you three different pieces of art that you can select. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to select this one so the client can basically enter this piece of art and you know so can this one. You kind of traverse into it. Um, so the purpose here is okay now we're looking at this art. So this art has a title, it's Crypto Pepe. Um, it's got a description, it's got a, a Bitcoin address to identify the artist, um, which is sort of the minimal, you know, if you want to send a message or, or something like that, you can, um, you know, sign it with that key or whatever, at least this is some reference to who actually created this art, um, hopefully. And then there's a Merkle root, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, but yeah, what you're seeing here, this is a 8 pixel by 8 pixel piece of art. It's just small, just for test purposes. Uh, but these numbers you hear, see here are, in fact, Satoshi prices for the pixel. So uh, the, the purpose of this application, yeah, you, you pay Satoshis and it reveals what the pixel of the art is. Um, so, for example, yeah, if we want to go and buy um, you know, a piece of art here, um, or, or a pixel here, uh, you can invoice... So that's coordinate three two. So it spins uh, a bolt eleven, and then I just have like this isn't actually connected to to the lightning or C lightning right now. It's just a, a mock, so I can just as quickly mark it as paid. So we bought coordinate three two on the grid, and so you can see both clients updated that that pixel has now been bought. Um, and yeah, let's buy another one. In fact. Let's buy two at the same time. So this is go one, two, three, and four. This isn't a great user interface. That's just how it works for um, the string at the moment. And I'm going to go. I'm going to give it a user string. I'll I'll explain that what that what that is in the, in a minute. But so I'll just buy two at a time here. And so it's going to spin another another bolt eleven, which we're going to pay in the same deal. Okay, so I'm going to go into this Merkle root thing. So um, when the artist has submitted a piece of art, they've in fact committed to this being the piece of art that's for sale. Uh, what we, what the, what the purchaser might be interested in is whether they're getting authentic pixels when they're buying them. Uh, so, for example, like if we're going to check check out an unbought pixel, I believe it's you know coordinate five five. It's one of those up here. So I'm going to look up the info for coordinate 5.5. What it's going to show is a Merkle, a Merkle proof, um, you know, through the layers of the Merkle tree all the way up to the root, which is A7, F5. That is, you know, the same number that gets advertised right up front as, um, you know, the Merkle root that represents the entire piece of art. So what it's showing you here is sort of the leaf of this, um, Merkle, Merkle tree is uh, something that's not yet purchased. So this is the value that we're in fact going to be purchasing uh, for our five Satoshis in this case. And yeah, it's it's the number which satisfies, um, you know, the SHA-256 of it is, is that, and then that gets, you know, loaded into the Merkle tree and gets proved all the way up. So let's go ahead and we'll go purchase 5.5 five here, and we'll go We'll give it a user string called hello world and again i will explain that in a moment so we go invoice it um, and we're going to pay pay that right away so there yep so we got the green pixel to show up there and the green pixel showed up there that's five five so we're going to look up five five so it's going to tell us that it's been purchased and that's the color it's that green green tone 
And so the hello world, this is the string that got submitted with the, with the, the, the invoice. So if that invoice is paid, then the whoever paid that invoice potentially is the one that gets to choose sort of a string as part of that pixel's metadata for all time to kind of say like, hey, I was here, I bought this pixel. Uh, but uh, unpacking this invoice now that it's been paid, uh, we know what the pre-image is. Um, so this was the pre-image of this, um, this. So this is in fact the, the number which satisfies this, this Merkle proof. So the SHA-256 of it is 8834, which was in fact the payment hash on that invoice. Now you might notice this isn't a purely random number. Um, it's somewhat random. Um, at the end, this is all like entropy. There's like 100 bits of entropy. Uh, but what you'll see here is there's a five and a five. That's in fact the coordinate. So this the this junk in the on the beginning. This just identifies the art. Um, and then of that piece of art, coordinate five. Oh, my highlight's broken in here. Um, yeah, there we go. Uh, slow computer. Yeah, uh, number five, number five, and then the color is encoded in. So that's technically a bit of entropy too, like you don't necessarily know the color in advance. Perhaps you could read the artist's mind in a small capacity, but you know there's enough random entropy in the rest of it to, to not, not to be too concerned there. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's basically it. We're, um, we're using the, the, the pixel, the, the information that you're being sold is in fact the, the thing which triggers the Lightning Network payment in this case. Uh, so that's that's a little bit more interesting than, than just uh, you know a straight up uh, pixel database sale. We're actually trying to um, to couple the pixel to the actual payment, so it's an atomic swap for that pixel. Uh, so yeah, just just for fun here, I'll invoice the remaining and mark paid, and so we'll get to see the rest of that. So this is Crypto Pepe, so it's just a very basic uh, piece of art. So that's a complete piece of art, and then yeah, you can look up, you know, or is that the wrong, wrong field? If you want to look up any any random pixel, you can you can find out how that pixel fits into the, the overall Merkle proof. Okay, so that's what the app does. Uh, so if you're not interested in sort of the implementation details, you can stop watching, but uh, just to kind of explain kind of what I got going on here, I just drew a bit of a picture. Um, so that's what these two terminals here are. I'll just kill the app. Um, so first I got this backend component, which is which is this box that I've drawn here. This is a, this is a Python REST API. And this is sort of the, the core logic of the entire application. It, um, it, uh, it has an API to like you know invoice pixels and query the state and and do all the various operations. It's a single threaded processing queue, and it's very transactional. It necessarily has to be. So it's it's basically doing all, all the coordination and it writes you know all the image state and stuff about paid invoices and all that to you know a different database for each piece of art. Um, so if I um, so this directory I gave it as a parameter, but so there's there's a a directory for each piece of art that's that's these guys down here and then yeah and then in each directory yeah there's a bunch of various um, dot dat files that um, that you know record all the pre-images and all that um, and then yeah so when an when an invoice get you know when we've got to request an invoice or we detect that an invoice has been paid um, this has to incorporate that into the transactions you know to update the state in such a way to reflect that the purchase has has taken uh, taking place. So yeah, this is designed to work with C Lightning. And I actually have it mocked out at the at the moment. Um, this the, this demo I showed you isn't actually talking to C Lightning, but I have a, a script here that behaves like C Lightning, um, and it has a bunch of um, things like for my unit tests. If I if I want to test an expired invoice, I can just tell the mock to sort of uh, advance the system clock by an hour. So I can see that the the invoices have expired, and you know, make sure that the logic happens in the right way. So that's that's the back end. So that's what was running right here. Um, uh, yeah. So that's it's you know starting up on uh, port five thousand. 
Uh, but then we have to to manage the web clients. I've got I've used used Python Twisted. So what's happening with the web clients is they're all connecting to this WebSocket server, and then this instance is more or less just caching the art and it's doing all the all the um, traffic direction to um, to notify everybody when a you know a pixel gets updated and um, you know passes through if an invoice is requested and uh, and yeah and when it detects that um, that hey there's new state it pulls the state back in updates the cache and then tells all the clients so this is meant to not block at all to keep the clients all very responsive this necessarily has to block to you know keep it all transactional uh, so uh, so yeah, like when I start the server, it it pulls pulls it in, and then you know, if I were to refresh this page, yeah, so it pulled pulled the state in, and it found out which which pieces of art there are. So yeah, this is fairly basic. This is designed to kind of scale horizontally, like I have multiple instances of these um, these various things, and because this is over um, a REST API, like these don't have to share hosts and that kind of thing. So I could have a fast back-end system or whatever, and then like a high memory kind of caching system. Uh, various things, thinking about down the road, if I got to scale this, um, yeah, I've you know, put some affordances in for that. So, uh, so yeah, that's all I wanted to talk about. Um, so this is a work in progress. As I mentioned, we're, um, we are going to be adding a very much nicer front end to this and you know, hopefully launching our application um, ASAP. Um, of course, it's a lot of work. This is this is a little bit complicated, but um, yeah. Thanks for watching. Thanks for taking interest. Bye bye.